So for anyone following this project, um, all 11 of you, uh, I'm sorry about the delay with this. It's been over 18 months since I put up the first video. Um, it's just in that time I moved and there's a lot of kind of upheaval. I had to put the shop in storage for over a year. Um, and when I finally pulled everything back out, um, there was just, it's just been a lot. I've, when we moved to this new house, the seller had the garage dressed as this ridiculous sitting room. And we know that that wasn't going to stay that way. So I, I put in a proper sub panel and electrical two, 240 volt, uh, you know, receptacles all around the shop. Cause you know, I have a lot of things that run on plugs shaped like that. I also fell down an IBM Selectric rabbit hole, which I'm still kind of in that hole, and I'd like to make some videos about it. Uh, I did spend some time making this roller cart last year. It just it was a place to store abrasives and put the grinder on, but it, it kind of it started innocently enough. I just wanted to make a box, practice my welding skills, make this box nice and square make it roll around and put the top and the sides on it and that was that was nice but then as soon as I moved into making drawers everything slowed down I, I sent this sheet metal out to a fabrication shop here in Burbank that cut them and folded them up for me I mean look at how nicely folded up those corners are they're so tight and uh, crisp um, I wish I had a break at home that could do that so I also was pushing myself to learn TIG welding, you know, trying to, I zipped up those corners without any filler rod, which was, took a lot of practice. Um, I've just a lot of fabrication stuff, painting, fitting, really it was just about trying to improve the quality of the stuff that I was fabricating. So onto the bending break, uh, towards the end of last year, I started to collect all the drawings that I had been making, uh, you know, trying to figure this thing out. And then I kind of switched over to Photoshop to really build it in earnest, at least in drawing form. It's just not the best software to be doing that in, but it's something that I'm very comfortable with. So I just made this massive document that has all these layers in it. And I've also been collecting all the raw material I need to make this project a reality. One inch nuts, 14 TPI threaded nuts. Uh, I've got some spares. These are these really beautiful bolts that were in Cosmoline that um, came from a really cool old surplus hardware store in, in Burbank. I've found these uh, nice sprockets and uh, this is a surplus like leftover chain that I uh, most of the stuff I've been picking up on eBay it's like new old stock. Actually I already bored out these um, sprockets. They're designed to be bored out. Um, I already I bored them a little too far, which is kind of my hallmark move as a machinist is I always seem to uh, go over my numbers. Um, I also have these pins, 10 millimeter dowels, dowel pins. These are just Amazon that are going to be part of uh, the eccentric. This is some of the uh, that's the four inch, four inch by one half by five feet of A2. And this is one and a half by one half. Uh, I think it's 36 inches. So the parts that are going to be A2 are those parts that actually bear on the workpiece. And the parts that are mild steel, that whether I choose to harden them or not, those parts, I think, um, those, I think I can get away with spending a little less money on uh, mild steel. Uh, so we'll see how that works. This is um, about $400 worth of steel, This these two pieces right here. The real high quality bending brakes, even the, the ones that have been left out for years, rusting away, uh, like a Pexto or a Diacro brake, they're just they're all well over a thousand dollars, even the smallest ones. So I do think if this is a capable 24 inch break, it'll be still kind of a bargain. So something I mentioned I was going to try doing in the first video was to prototype the break in wood. 
so that I'd make my mistakes in a much cheaper material, much easier to work with material. And um, that has been a fairly accurate prediction. I've been, I have been making mistakes, and it has been very valuable to kind of rough it out in, uh, in wooden form before I dive into making it in steel. I've also been making stuff out of Delrin, and um, there's a whole kind of subplot to this story about turning spheres because um, Dan mentioned in the comments of the first video that the nuts that are on the top of the bending brake have a spherical profile on the bottom and they they're, they sit in a spherical seat of an, in a washer underneath them. One of the remaining mysteries of this project is what is the diameter of the sphere where the, you know, the seat and the nut kind of match and what is the angle like how how what's the relationship of that spherical profile to the height of the nut um so in addition to turning eccentrics and interesting stuff like that i've made i had to make a ball turning attachment for the lathe which is pretty rudimentary but it seems to do the trick and i'm moving from making these spherical shapes and you know negative hemispheres and positive hemispheres making them in um, in plastic, and then now I'm going to make them in steel. I, I've made spheres before. I've, I've made, um, I made this locking handle for my Millwright milling machine a couple of years ago. I, I use this other kind of technique of using a, um, a boring bar head uh, and rotating the part underneath it with at an angle, which is a really, really cool technique, but I didn't feel like it was something that I'd have enough accuracy um, for for this particular project. So I decided I would try to make a ball turning attachment and make it on the lathe, which is something I've always kind of wanted to have, is uh, that capability. This is kind of the main base structure uh, for the brake. Uh, I made this, this is the first thing I made, uh, I made these side pieces and I I was really convinced that this um, this piece here was flat on the workbench and that this kind of hidden apron, which you can't really see in Dan's video, um, that that was flush with the front edge of it. And I, my confirmation bias was really strong for that. Um, but that's why these pieces are cut out because I cut them out and rebuilt it. But this is actually a quarter of an inch lifted off of the surface of the um, of the workbench. And it's also proud, This the front edge of this sits proud of this kind of reinforcing apron underneath. Um, this apron and how it's attached to the um, to the base part is, I don't know. I don't know how it's attached. It might be screwed on or it might be welded on, but I, I have to think that if you're going to weld along all those seams, it's going to, this is going to bend like a banana or something's, it's going to really distort. So I haven't figured that out. I might TIG weld it. I might try stick welding it for the, just the sheer strength of it. Um, or I might, I'm, I don't know. Uh, I know that there are screw holes that are visible in the video right here. And, and I think all these dimensions I have now are pretty close to being correct, but I know that these side panels are probably screwed on to the ends of this. And the other thing is that if this is tool steel and this is just a regular mild steel, then I don't know, I don't think they're going to weld together very well. So that's, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So, um, and this is the, the shaft in the back. It doesn't have any eccentrics. I'm probably not going to build those, um, in the prototype version, in the rich mahogany version of the bending brake. So this is the the bending apron itself with these little tiny 5 8 shafts that uh, hold it together. Come on. There we go. So this isn't the most accurately built thing, but it, it still swings freely and it, it goes up as far as it needs to. Um, and it did, I did learn a lot about, this is all kind of tight quarters in these corners, that these panels here that are 
one half an inch by one and a half inches that are screwed to the sides of these arms. Um, they have to they have to have clearance so that they, this can go flat, and this apron has to have clearance. You know, laterally it has to be kind of trimmed on either side so that this can rotate down at rest. Um, but when I first built this thing, it was all smashing into the workbench and interfering. So I'm really glad that I did the prototyping because I'd never I'm the kind of guy that. When I'm presented with a math problem, I have to push the numbers through it in order for it to make sense. I can't look at the abstract presentation of of equations, you know. Uh, so then there, the last part of it, well, before I put this on, this is the actual finger brake portion. I, I roughed out these little, these are one inch diameter Delrin. These posts are a little too short, but um, they're, they're helpful for kind of figuring out um, where everything works and how it goes. But this is kind of a dummy, a blank version. Here's that 10 millimeter pin that, that Dan said is, that's what this eccentric registers in. So all of this is not visible in the video, but I'm kind of making assumptions about how big these things are. And um, so as you turn this one way or the other, you can see it's, it's already pushing it laterally or front and back. Some of my uh, locations are a little off, and um, I need to actually, when I do it in, for, in the real version, I have to move these bolts maybe like a hundred thousandths forward uh, because it's not it's not quite flush. But I think a lot of this stuff is working out pretty nicely. It's a 21, 21 tooth sprocket. Yeah, see, these are really loose, and they're not loose at all in the video, so. They're 19 and a quarter inches apart or something, and they go right to the very edges of these. They, they almost interfere. Um, they bind up against this. But when I make this for real, I'm going to make these. These will be a little sli slightly bit thinner and a slightly bit more outboard. I'll do this a different way. If you put them on the actual bolts. And these are going to be all cut down. If you place these on here, there's less. There's it's a little bit tighter because um, these are actually measured more accurately. They're not tilted in as they are in the plastic version. Um, so I think I don't know what the the natural slack is for the design of these chains, but um, the biggest questions are. How is this thing fastened together? Like the cross section, I've I've made assumptions about on the fingers is that there's a three quarter inch square piece of stock uh, on the bottom of this plate that, that rotates like this, and I think that it's tilted or angled, and the there's a quarter twenty screws are all fastening those fingers into the into there and that makes a nice firm kind of support for each each one of those fingers that, as they go across. But I don't know how that three quarter inch bar is fastened to this plate. Is it welded? I think maybe it is. I think all of this is made of mild steel except for the fingers in my in my version. And then I have the same questions about if this is if this is hardened tool steel and this is mild steel. Um, and even in Dan's, if it was made of, if it was made of cold rolled, all those pieces, did he weld it and then send it out for case hardening? Um, I think that that's what he did. But I don't know how he welded it. Um, if he TIG welded it, and it, what, did he have to deal with distortion? Because I think that's that's a big issue and something that you want to be very, very, very flat. Um, so that's that's the prototype.